First, if your motherboard has any plastic wrap coatings, make sure to peel them off. Start by pushing down the latches of the RAM slots that you need. If you are only using two sticks of RAM, make sure to insert them in the second and fourth slots going from left to right. RAM sticks will have a notch depending on what generation you have, so they can only be fitted one way. Make sure to push straight down and listen for the two clicks, one at each end as each of the latches clicks into the locked position. And there you have your new RAM installed. If your motherboard has an SSD port heat shield, unscrew it and remove it. This is the port in which your M.2 SSD will slot into, and this is the latch that holds its other end in place. Insert the SSD into the slot, then using either the included screw or a twist latch if your motherboard has one, secure the other end of the SSD into place. If you are using the motherboard heat shield, make sure to remove the underside plastic film. Place the heat shield back into position on top of the fitted SSD, screw it in, making sure to insert both screws part way before tightening them both fully. First, look for the tiny triangle in the bottom left corner of your CPU. Then look for the corresponding triangle on your CPU bracket. This will give you an idea of which way to insert the CPU. Using the lever, open the CPU socket, making sure to leave the protective plastic bracket attached. Insert the CPU by gently dropping it in place. It should slot in neatly without needing any pressure. Lower the bracket whilst pulling the lever back to its original place, making sure to secure it under the latch. In doing so, you'll likely hear some creaking noises, which is normal, and the plastic bracket should pop off. Double check the triangles on the CPU and CPU mount lineup, and you are now ready to install the CPU cooler. Firstly, remove the film from the back plate. Then fit it to the back of your motherboard, making sure each corner is secure. Next, locate the correct screws and screw them into the same four holes on the front of the motherboard to secure the backplate in place. Then apply thermal paste to your CPU, or in this case, we're using a CPU cooler which already has pre-applied thermal paste. Even so, we thought we'd give you some tips anyway. One way to apply thermal paste is the X method. As the name would suggest, it involves applying the paste in an X shape over the CPU. It looks like it should create an even spread of paste as the X shape reaches every corner. However, this method usually ends up using far more paste than is necessary. Pressure from the cooler contact spreads the paste across the CPU, but as you can see, this method often results in very cakey paste due to too much being used. So much so, that it can sometimes escape the confines of the CPU and cooler and begin to overflow. Another method is using a single line across the CPU which is then spread using a spatula that often comes with the paste. This method is much more time consuming than the others, but arguably it does mean you have more control over where the paste goes and how much is used. This method is however a little bit more complex than the others and if you don't know what you're doing you could end up making an absolute mess of it. To achieve it, simply use the spatula to spread the paste across the whole of the CPU. Once fully spread, use the spatula to pick up any excess giving it even coverage without caking. With all that said though, we think this is the best method of applying thermal paste. It's known as the P method. As the name suggests, squeeze a pea-sized blob onto the middle of the CPU. Then situate your CPU cooler of choice into position and secure it. The pressure from the contact will then spread the paste across most of the CPU and the heat from the PC will later spread it onto each corner. This will ultimately provide the most efficient spread of paste. To mount the cooler, install it onto the CPU and motherboard, slotting it down onto the four screws. Make sure that the tubes are on the side of the pump closest to the RAM sticks. Then screw it in place going from corner to corner, making sure to go back and fully tighten each screw. When fitting the fans to the radiator, there is a right and wrong way to do it. One incorrect way is shown here, with the wire going up and across the front of the radiator instead of the back. This will result in the wire being visible in your case and also potentially not being able to reach its port. Instead, make sure to turn the fan so that the wires lead directly to the back of the radiator as shown here. Even more importantly is making sure to fit the fans the right way up in order for them to work as exhaust fans. They should be fit with the logo side face up. This will ensure that they take air out of the case rather than pulling air in. To fit them, lay them on the underside of the radiator, the side that the tubes come out of, and screw each corner down. As always, go over each screw and make sure they are tightened fully. Lower the motherboard and radiator into the case, lining up the IO shield with a cutout on the case and click it in place. Then screw in the motherboard securely using the screws provided with your case. Plug the pump cable into its respective port and plug the pump power cable into the motherboard. Usually it's the header labeled CPU or CPU optional, but some motherboards label it as AIO. Next, when attaching the radiator to the PC case, make sure that the tubes aren't twisted as seen here. 
Instead, untwist them so that they sit neatly in one smooth curve as shown. When it comes to attaching the radiator, there are a range of holes to be screwed in along each side. First, screw in each corner to level out the radiator and make it easier to insert the rest of the screws. Then move along to the inner set of screws varying between each side of the radiator. After this, go back and make sure each one is secure and tight. Once done, start feeding the various cables through so you can plug them into the front of the motherboard. Then make sure to pull any excess cable back through. Repeat this with the other cables making sure to pull any excess wire back through. Next it's time to install the hard drive. First take out the hard drive tray from your PC case. Then insert the HDD into place making sure that the logo is face up and the ports are at the end with the angled metal bits. Then flip the tray over and locate the four screw holes. Screw in each one making sure to go corner to corner to keep the hard drive balanced. Once done, flip the drive over and insert it back into the case. Find the data SATA cable and plug it into the hard drive. Feed it through to the front of the PC and plug it into its header on the motherboard, pulling any excess wire back through. Lastly, plug the power cable into the hard drive, and there you have your new hard drive installed. Now we can move on to installing the power supply. First, insert the PSU into the case and slide it into position. The various screw holes on the PSU should line up with the screw holes on the case. Screw the PSU in place using the screws provided. Next, plug the motherboard power cables into the PSU and begin to feed it through to the front of the PC. Then plug in the rest of the cables into the relevant spots on the PSU. Make sure to check your manuals to figure out where all your cables go. It's now time for some cable management. Some PC cases come with pre-installed Velcro ties to help, but if yours doesn't, you can use zip ties to bundle cables together or to fold them into smaller lengths to make them more manageable. And that should be the end of your PSU installation. Now we can move on to installing the graphics card. Firstly, remove any plastic packaging and protective film from the GPU. The GPU can only be inserted into the motherboard one way, so make sure you know where the notch is. The notch can then be found on the GPU connection port on the motherboard itself. With that figured out, insert the GPU into its motherboard slot and use a bit of pressure to click it into place. Then locate the screw holes which will be used to secure the GPU to the case brackets. With the screws provided, screw the GPU into place. Then plug in the GPU power cable. Bear in mind if your GPU only has one 8 pin slot, you'll need an adapter like we're using here. Attach the two sides of the plug together to form an 8 pin. They don't click together so you'll need to hold them in place while you connect them. When you've connected the cables to the GPU or adapter, gently pull the cables down to allow room for the side panel. Make sure they're not overly taut though, as it'll put pressure on your GPU's connection to the case and motherboard. The final step is to fully assemble your PC case by fitting all its panels. The case we are using is the Corsair 4000D, but most cases are similar and should come with a guide if you need any specific guidance. First, click the top vent into place. It should be as simple as lining it up and pushing it down until each end clicks. Slot the smaller back panel down onto the two hinges located near the back edge of the case. Make sure the cables inside are tidy and allow the door to close. Then insert the screw and tighten it into place. The main back panel then simply clicks into place and is secured by tightening two pre-attached screws, one at the top and one at the bottom. Before attaching the glass side panel, test that the PC turns on and seems to be in working order. When happy, click the glass panel into place similarly to the back panel, then tighten the two screws in the same way. Your PC case should now be fully assembled. Enjoy!